this week's message given by Pastor Stephen Young at the Sakasana United Methodist Church, February 11, 2024. The message is, listen to him, based on James 1, 19-20 and Mark 9, 2-9. Reading this morning is from the book of James, chapter 1, verses 19-20. through 20. My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry, because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Amen. Please stand for the gospel lesson. The gospel lesson is from the book of Mark, chapter 9, verses 2 through 9. After six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John with him and led them up a high mountain where they were all alone. There he was transfigured before them. His clothes became dazzling white, whiter than anyone in the world could bleach them. And there appeared before them Elijah and Moses who were talking with Jesus. Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, is it good for us to be here? Let us put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say. They were all so frightened. Then a cloud appeared and covered them, and a voice came from the cloud. This is my son, whom I love. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they no longer saw anyone with them except Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus gave them orders not to tell anyone what they had seen until the Son of Man had risen from the dead. This is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen. Good to be with you today. Would you join me as I pray? Oh God, you call us to come and listen and receive. We are listening, oh God, we are open. Fill our hearts with the bread of life, the gift of listening, the gift of new life. Make us alive as we listen to your words. We pray all this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. So there was a preacher serving at a church in Kentucky. One day he took a, a vacation for deer hunting in the mountains. And despite the lack of success in hunting, he had an amazing, spiritually refreshing time in the mountains. On the third day in the bush, he started back to uh, his car but couldn't find where he had parked it. He wandered in the woods for a couple of hours. And in desperation, as darkness fell, he fired his gun, hoping to attract someone's attention. And sooner or later, a game warden stepped out of the bush brush and saying, I am fining you for hunting at night and giving you a ticket. <laughs> the preacher explained, you know, I wasn't hunting, I was trying to get help. Besides, I'm a law-abiding Methodist preacher. The game warden looks suspiciously at the man before him with a three-day growth of beard. You know, nothing about him looked religious. So if you're really a Methodist preacher, let me hear you say the Lord's Prayer, said the warden. And the preacher, bewildered, bewildered by his uh, plight, uh, he closed his eyes and said, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. Listening to this, the word and exclaim, Good Lord, you are truly a man of God. That was a joke, by the way. Uh, and I wasn't sure if our 9 o'clock worshippers understood. Maybe I should uh, deliver a sermon series on the Lord's Prayer. So, friends, we think we are, but most of the time, we are not listening. We're not truly really listening. Open, we hear only what we want to hear. Even when we listen with our mouths shut, we may desire others to tell us what 
aligns with our preferences and values. If not, we think of how we can get their minds to change. That becomes our concern. How do we change their mind and make them agree with us while hearing? We want to listen to those who think and speak like us. Just like, uh, uh, you know, uh, this is one of the tendencies. We are reluctant to listen to those who challenge us, make us uncomfortable. This is why we tend to avoid listening to what is challenging and difficult while favoring what is uncomfortable what is comfortable and familiar. As we celebrate Transfiguration Sunday this morning, we hear the resounding voice heard by the disciples on the mountains. This is my son whom I love. Listen to him. It was a moment of revelation when God revealed the divine nature of Jesus Christ and his glory as the Son of God. Jesus was exalted above Moses and Eliza who represented the law and the prophets, the prophetic promises. It means Jesus is the, is the fulfillment of the Old Testament laws and prophetic promises. So why does God tell the disciples to listen to Jesus? Listen to him. When God says this to Peter, James, and John, the three disciples during transfiguration, is not only speaking generally, not just listening in general, he's referring to a specific teaching Jesus had just given the disciples, the apostles, six days prior. Today's gospel lesson begins with these uh, reference to the time. In verse 2 it says, after six days. And we wonder what happened six days prior. What was Jesus teaching about? According to chapter 8, Jesus began to teach his disciples about the suffering, rejection, crucifixion, and death that he will face in the near future. The disciples heard him say that. But what they heard was not aligned with their expectations. As we know, Peter, one of, one of uh, Jesus' disciples, rebuked Jesus for teaching something he couldn't accept. You know, what they heard from Jesus was not only inconceivable, but something they didn't want to hear because it meant to give up their expectations and hopes for the long-awaited Messiah. So what does this gospel story have to do with us today? You know, there are several lessons that we can find and learn from this scene in the life of Jesus and his disciples. And one of the central messages of this gospel story can be summed up in the three words, listen to him. Listen to him, which is also the title of my message today. Friends, when it comes to listening, there are three types or three modes of listening that create a barrier to be a genuine, attentive listener. It is SAD in an acronym. You know how much I love acronym. It's SAD, said. And this morning I will talk about the first two, S-A, and the third barrier I will share through our devotional this week. The first barrier is selective listening. S represents selective listening. Selective listeners only hear messages they agree with. You know, they only listen for a point that they can support and they refuse to admit or engage with what they disagree with. Like Jonah in the Old Testament, 
You know, he was reluctant to follow uh, God's com command. You know, he attempted to escape God's word and, uh, and going to uh, a different place. And it ex exemplifies a form of selective listening where he chooses to hear only the parts of the message that he prefers. That aligns with his preferences. Likewise, we may find it easy to listen to the words of God when it, when it encourages me, lifts, lifts me, affirms me. The question is, are we listening when what God says us, to us is difficult to hear? It can be challenging. It can be challenging to listen to the call of God, especially when that call involves something we don't think we can do, something that we want to do. Are you a selective listener or an open-ended questioner or open-minded listener? Selective listeners only listen for themselves. They just want their thoughts and opinions to be validated by others. However, open-minded listeners hear for God and hear for others. You don't shy away from difficult topics. You don't run away from tough conversations. Instead, you face them head-on for the benefit of yourself, your family, your community. So the first barrier was, what was it? Selective listening. The second barrier, S-A-D-A, represent assumptive listening. Assumptive listening. So assumptive listeners make assumptions about what you say. It's meaning, intention, even before you finish your words your stories. Especially if you're close to someone, you may assume you know what they're going to say, you know, and, and thinking that, oh yeah, I know what you're going to say. And you don't hear them out. You might complete your sen they might complete your sentence even before you finish your words. They might jump in while you're still speaking. If you were one of those sentence grabbers, I want to invite you to consider the teaching of James chapter 1, verse 19 seriously. It reads, Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Let me say it again. Everyone should be slow to speak, quick to listen, slow to become angry. Friends, how often are we quick to speak and slow to listen? As relationship counselors say, listening intently with one's mouth shut is a basic communication skill needed in marriage, intimate relationships. I agree with that, but not just in marriages, but in other relationships too. We should learn how to hold our tongue and discern when to speak, when to remain silent. Last weekend, uh, co-chairs of Open Door Team Social Justice Ministry Team, Antoinette and Stacey and I participated in the conference called The Breaches Project. The Breaches Project, which is a year-long Lilly Endowment um, funded program that gives congregations the uh, creative experiences and tool to deeply engaging with their surrounding community. The main theme for this first gathering was the power of listening and storytelling. One of the exercises we did as a small group was just to listen to each other's stories without interrupting. You know, without making any comments, without asking questions, just listen. It was quite challenging because as you listen to some of the stories, you, you find some connections to make, right? You know,
know, oh, I've been there too. I've experienced that too. You want to say those words. You want to ask some of the questions as you listen. So it was challenging, and I'm sure it will be a challenging thing for many of us, especially if you're one of those sentence grabbers. It's hard not to interrupt or finish others' sentences. And as I engage in the exercise of fully emerging myself in listening, and as I saw other people paying full attention to me and my story, I felt genuinely heard. I felt genuinely listened to. And I felt honored by those who listened to me with undivided attention. It was such a powerful, touching experience just to experience the way they listened to me and embraced my story was heartwarming. In his book, Life Together, which was published in 1930s, 1938, the German theologian von Hopper addresses a problem among Christians in his time that still resonates in today's world. He writes, quote, Many people are looking for an ear that will listen. Unfortunately, they do not find it among Christians because these Christians are talking where they should be listening. But he, but he who can no longer listen to his brother or sister will soon be no longer listening to God either. He will be doing nothing but prattle in the presence of God too. You know, the words of this young German theologian, also the martyr, during the Second World War by Nazis are striking. It's a striking words because they emphasize the connection between the listening to fellow human beings and listening to God. Don Hopper suggests that the ability to listen to others is intertwined with our ability, our capacity to listen to God. This means genuine Christian community it's not possible but when people stop listening to each other. The genuine Christian community is not viable when we stop listening to each other. Just as being a Christian, having faith is not possible without listening to God. Friends, who needs your listening ear today? Who needs your listening presence this week? I invite you to share the gift of listening, especially with those whom you tend to speak more than you listen. Give the person your full attention. Avoid judging and jumping to conclusion before they finish their story. If this is someone you often disagree with, try this. This is from a psychologist, uh, Carl Rogers. Speak for yourself only after you have restated what you heard to that person's satisfaction. You know, this is a powerful way to connect and understand those around you, even when you don't agree with the person. Yes, listening is hard. It is hard. And it seems to be getting harder and harder because of all the internal, external noises around us these days. But remember, it's essential to what it means to be a Christian. It's essential to what it means to be a Christian community. This is my son whom I love. Listen to him. And this is also the voice that we should listen to. And listening requires a real choice and commitment. Not just once in a while, but each day. We make this intentional choice to listen. And by you to leave this place of worship with this question, friends. To better listen to Christ, to better listen to each other. What listening barriers do you need to overcome? Today. Remember SAD, sad, 
I didn't talk about the last one, which is the defensive, self-protective listening. I'm going to talk about it through the, uh, you know, devotional. Is it selective listening that becomes your barrier? Is it assumptive listening or defensive, self-protective listening? Don't make a sad choice in listening. God calls us to move beyond these barriers and grow as a church a deep and attentive, open-ended, open-minded listening so that we can better listen to Christ and to one another. Listen to the Holy Spirit who is the best listener, the best communication coach. Ask Him, Lord, I want to be a better listener. And teach me your ways. Help me to trust you as I listen to others, holding them gently, attentively, empathetically. Not rushing to make assumptions, not rushing to fix them, save them. Not rushing to hurry them along their journey with you. Amen.